Hello, Hello. It's the first day of lockdown, 2020. No it, time has passed at all. And also, yes, it was all an episode, like that whole series that existed of Dallas, where it turned out that Bobby Ewing had merely been in the shower and it had been a dream. It's 2020. It's March again. Scary. Oh, Ugh. and but side of it's the first day of lockdown, we all think that this will all be over within about six to 12 weeks. Yeah. So hopefully by the summer, none of us will have to worry about any of this anymore. So we're going to live that year again and see if we can do it better. Anyway, um, hello. Welcome to Stay at Home Festival. Uh, one off it is, uh, yeah, one year ago we had, I think it was Mark, was it Mark Gatiss, George Egg and Grace? It sounds about right. Grace on the first one, I think she was. Um, so I hope you're all doing well. Um, we're sorry it's uh, dragged on for uh, so long, and it has. Sometimes it does. I thought I don't know about you, Josie, but I thought at the end of January, I was like, oh, we got through January, everything's upbeat now. And then at the end of February, I went, uh, still got my crossing out pen for this diary. <laughs> my why did i put it in a diary in the first place use post-it notes it feels uh less of a, a, a terrible destruction when you go cross that one out yeah i i sort of in january became so deeply pessimistic where i was like well why don't i just assume nothing will ever happen then that's easier i'll just assume nothing will ever happen ever again and so that now we've got to march i feel quite just a little bit vibey and excited because I do feel that something's going to happen at some point. Um, but let's be honest. I think there's another reason for that, isn't there? As you told me off air, you've started to use conditioner and your hair is curling. And I think I've... that is having quite a positive effect. Yes, listen, listen. Some of you might just take shampoo into the shower, but I take shampoo and conditioner. So that's very exciting for me. And I started doing um, workouts. I'm, I'm trying to take a leaf out of your book. Um, I was doing yoga every day and now I do yoga and a workout. And the workout is by a woman on YouTube who's so nice. But because she's so good at the workouts every single day, I'm like, you, you again. Fuck you. So. Well, I do think there do need to be wheezier workouts, don't they? It's a bit <laughs> like when, I can't remember who it was, his, his name. Uh, he, one of the first people who did the kind of BBC breakfast show 15, 20 years ago. And uh, a middle-aged guy, he'd been a war correspondent and uh, now he was back living in the UK and he'd recently had twins. So uh, BBC Breakfast would start with, uh, morning, Ooh, welcome to, um, to BBC Breakfast. And that was a nice thing, as opposed to the whole kind of zingy at <laughs> seven o'clock and later on we're going to be joined by uh, John Bon Jovi and you know, that kind of thing. And it was, and, and I feel that that in the same way, that, and it just bent, ooh, Oh, hang on. No, don't. None of you. Stop bending now, just for a I second. I someone is like, we're going to try and do these burpees, but I presume after 10 of the 20 seconds, we're all going to take a breather, so let's try. Yeah, and also, um, right, it's the bit you hate. Burpees, you always feel that you're wobbling around too much. It's not a comfortable situation. I hate them too. Oh, a little bit more yeah. of that. Not like, yeah, this is great. What's your least favourite? Because I, when I toured with Brian uh, Cox, Steph, who, who uh, kind of came the, and, and she would put us through our paces every single day. And there were a couple of things that I would just go, no, I can feel too much of the body that I'm in and I don't like it. Why? What did you not like? I think it was burpees. I think I'm not keen on, on, on burpees. I'm not keen on, on sudden movement things. I like the kind of <laughs> you don't like dynamic. stuff and <laughs> pulling stuff. That's all all right. But that kind of whoa bits, I don't like them. <laughs> there was a thing where my, uh, like, uh, for years, I tried to do a thing where you roll and then you just keep on rolling and stand up. So it's like a sit-up where you jump up at the end, but you don't use your hands. My body was not built that way, and it will never work for me. And it was so frustrating to be like, but but I do this all the time. I must be getting better. No, your body will never be better at this. It will never be possible for you to do this. No! Yeah, so that's basically me. <laughs> now, we're going to uh, we're joined, we should say, we're also Grace Petrie is with us today, and we're going to see her shortly. And hopefully, very hopeful, the lines in her face that are from her pillow, which show that she only got up just before doing this, will not have disappeared. But she's deliberately vanished just now, I think, to use some form of luxury. Cr yeah, there we are. <laughs> not just, yeah, that I like to see. That's You still go performer's time. Mm. How have you found that, Grace? The crack you're, you're... of dawn for me. This is still the crack of dawn for me. I haven't become any more like, 
you would think that I used to sort of tell myself that the reason I could get up in the morning was because I normally work at night. But it turns out after a whole year of not doing any gigs at all in the evening, no, I still can't get up in the morning for any reason. We're night reason. owls. We're we night owls. owls. Yeah. So well, we I can't do that, though. I get br- different like categories of um, of sleep rhythm, isn't there? And uh, and apparently, I'm a, a wolf. Ooh. Yeah, there's like a wolf, and uh, um, I, you can look it up online. I just remember that I'm a wolf, and it's somebody who's most um, uh, sort of uh, like productive at f- about four o'clock in the afternoon, and then has like another second wind in the evening um but basically but it, it was really like it was very um vindicating to learn about that because it's like yeah m- my entire life the mornings have been a write-off and so <laughs> it makes you feel dreadful about it but no it's true I do I get a lot done in the evenings but this is living in a world run by people for whom the morning is easy and their best time and because they like they run things they just can't believe that it wouldn't be a fault in you Mm. that is stopping you from being like them and they're never ever like well I guess mornings are hard for some people they're like no we all know mornings are easy and the best time of the day and if you could just do it and not be terrible and I yeah my whole life I've kind of my mum was like that morning (laughs) everyone are you all awake we are now Mm. and we'd also go it's a bit of a cheat because you have a little sleep in the afternoon whereas we didn't have that so you've collected extra sleep and then made us feel like tardy fools by the fact that we're not zingy at this point no, it's uh, it's, it's interesting because I, I can't. Wolves. I want to be a wolf. And that is that actually what those marks are? Is that where the terrified zookeeper last night after one of your transformations? The, the uh, um, but I find it really because I now I, I still don't go to bed early. I so every morning I go tonight. I must go to bed by about eleven, and then about eleven I go. What I could do is watch rapidly loads of movies that are on streaming services that are terrible that were made in the nineteen eighties. All these Italian exploitation movies called things like The Bronx Warriors, Escape from the Bronx. Terrible World 3000, right? And I watch them, and, I, and I'll do about five of those in about two hours. I go opening bit, set up. It is a world without any oil or water, right? Okay. Car chase, strange, badly dubbed child, big ending of the of, of the film. And I do about five of those. Then it's two in the morning, but I still set my alarm for seven so that I can get into arguments on social media earlier. Perfect. Yeah, really mm. good. The early bird captures the best ire. Fascist. <laughs> yeah, and then also realises that their own position on something was very poorly thought out at 1am. <laughs> That's a disaster. What's your show and tell today yeah, then? Hey? you got a show and tell, Grace Petrie, or is yours going to be a lovely song? I thought I'd show and tell a lovely song. Is that That's all right? That's all right. That is quite acceptable for your showing and telling. Josie Long, do you have a showing and telling? Yeah, I do. Let me try and think of something nearby. Oh, here. Look. <laughs> So part wow, of you covered that you covered that so well. One of the <laughs> things my daughter has done in the past month is found my childhood frog collection that I had in a box. When I was a kid, I collected hundreds of ornamental frogs, most of which this one's plastic. It says quite prominently that it was made in 1978 by Inesco. I think I guess it's a pencil topper or it could be used as one. Either that or it just needs to be hollow to be what it is. Um, But we have so many of them. She's broken two or three china frogs already. You've broken one of them in the last two minutes. It's It's all happening very fast, this one. But it's really interesting because, well, firstly, the whole flat is now studded with these in a sort of sinister way. So wherever (laughs) you go, there's a little frog watching you. But secondly, it really, really, I couldn't believe how many of them felt so evocative to me. I couldn't believe how many of them I'd obviously really loved at the time. Like I'd find someone be like, these ones, my mum gave me these. And they remind me so deeply of like such an innocent time, you know, in primary school when I like friends would give me a frog and everywhere we went, I would buy a little frog if I could. And yeah. And also I don't really understand why. I, I don't think I love frogs particularly. It was just like, I collect frogs and toads. That's what I do, you know. Do you have a memory of kissing any of the frogs? Uh, Didn't we talk about this the other day? We were, we were talking a little bit about the work of Elizabeth Loftus about memory. Do you remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, 
<laughs> well, and here's an interesting thing. Implanting wrong memories in people involving kissing a plastic frog. Oh, yeah. Well, my, um, my, my daughter's been watching the film The Princess and the Frog, which is about uh, a girl who is from quite a poor background and she wants to open a restaurant and about what does it mean to work hard and is that the only thing important in life? And um, that's she gets turned into a frog in that. So I feel like, at the very least, I've had that in the ambiance, you know. Well, when she's a teenager, if this phase continues, then um, obviously the wrestler Rowdy Roddy Piper in Hell Comes to Frog Down is a <laughs> great film to... to well, uh, you say that, you've only seen the start, the car chase and the end. So Oh, know. no, Hell Comes to Frog Town is, is one of... You know, there, there is, there's kind of those movies you can flip through and those movies where you realise that each time you return to Hell Comes to Frog Town, you're a different age and you take something different away from it. Of course, you take a different of course. Sense of meaning. You never step into the same frog town twice. Exactly. The uh, that's what I've got. My show and tell is uh, um, I just went into the the room where all my old Betamax videos are of things that I just taped off the telly. Wow. And this is such a weird. Uh, these are only a few of them, but for for modern people, the idea that the most exciting thing was there's these tapes, right? And you put them, you can tape anything off the telly because now you just go to YouTube, you go to streaming services, and so these are and I. Oh, Robin? Robin, Robin, come back. Grace, are you still here? I'm still here, but I don't. I didn't prepare any show and tells. Well, um, you but, can see. Were you into, so, can I ask you some some follow ups about the frogs? Of course well, you can. Listen, to space. listen, it was my dream. Oh, hang on, Robin's back. Robin, we lost, we lost you. Oh, you there said, we go. I was just saying. The uh, oh that that means yeah my printer there this is so yeah I don't know how much I told you there but th this tape's got the news tapes with Rick Mail Saturday oh. Live Alas Smith and Jones oh. on the spot with John Sessions and it just says here documentary about 1960s armed struggle in the USA that was me <laughs> as a teenager these were the kind of things that I that feels uh, like now to be honest I just put everything I'd sit there waiting for like so so this has got Halloween three. Uh, an episode of Monty Python, not the nine o'clock news. Boys from the Black stuff and Fry and Laurie on the Royal Variety. And I would p get that, and I would think, well, I've got to have that because this is. I'm, I might be the only librarian who has these things. I might be the only one that they go in in years to come. Does no one have footage of Fry and Laurie on the Royal Variety show? Yeah, I do. Not realizing that YouTube would come along and they go, all of these are just null and void. You don't need any of these. Well. Wow. Now. Mel Brooks on the Roland River on show. That was very important to me. Uh, sometimes I'd also just bespoke them a little bit. That's, that's uh, the, uh, the uh, TV Times listing for the uh, Outland with Sean Connery on. Um, What's that? Arthur and Phil in Spain. Do you know about Arthur and Phil? No. Arthur Smith and his friend Phil Nice, who used to be in a double act called Fiasco Job Job, and they did a series on Channel 4 called Arthur and Phil Go Off. And it was brilliant. And I think some of them are on YouTube. I think Phil's actually put them up. Have a look. They are beautiful, stupid documentaries like Arthur and Phil uh, go off up the M1, uh, which is is brilliant. And it's got loads of people who were kind of on the circuit in the 1980s. So people like John Dowie, uh, Malcolm Hardy. And, and it's really Arthur and Phil was an absolutely fantastic show. Um, it's got Last Resort. Uh, Robbie Coltrane as Robert De Niro's on that episode of The Last Resort. What a stupid child. And look what no. I grew in. Sounds Everything. really good. And it sounds a lot less... My problem is that I sort of... I'm not that interested in light entertainment style shows where people might do a spot on. And I feel like before... You know, in the 80s and 90s, if there was someone guesting on something that was part of a comedy show, it wasn't part of a light entertainment thing. Yeah. So promoting a book, you know, they were doing an impression of Robert De Niro. Well, I was thinking because the other day we, we put an, an uncanny hour all about Derek Jarman and Jubilee. And I'm thinking Derek Jarman on Jonathan Ross's Last Resort. So here is an art house filmmaker, an activist, an artist. <sighs> Sitting, he had a, he had a bowler hat filled with cornflakes that he just sat there eating while thinking about his work, and he had such humanity as well, and such a kind of you know lovely sense of humour. And it is, I, I think, I watched that. There's a bunch of old um, variety shows from Edinburgh about 1990. Right. And in one way, they're not very good. But in another way, what's great about them is you can almost see that, that someone just going, yeah, we're making a TV show and, I, and we'd like to have you on it. 
Oh, I haven't really thought about that. Oh, all right, then we'll, we'll bang this pot, and then I sing that song, uh, which involves me uh, hitting myself with a roller skate. Brilliant, do that. Whereas now, of course, everything you see is, you know, I, I remember having a conversation with someone, an agent once, who was talking about, we might have talked about this before, but talking about one of his acts who was in despair because he couldn't come up with his new 10 minutes. And what that meant was he was working on the stand-up that must be the next 10 minutes when he was next asked to do Live at the Apollo. Wow. It's a very weird. I mean, you don't think, Josie, do you, do you, when you're making a show, do you ever think right now, when are the, what are the bite sized bits? No, but I, I do often think when I've got a show, oh, that bit is really good. I love that bit. And I have often in the past been like, hello, television, look at this good bit. And they've always just been like, fuck you, fuck you. We're going to sing to swear. with other t- <laughs> celebrities. And later on this week, you're going to make a pizza in which Robin's son's going to say, it didn't go very well with the bass for Josie. It didn't. It didn't. <laughs> He's right. That's right. <laughs> he always enjoys watching you, though. He always enjoys the different things. It was funny because I didn't see that episode. And he said, oh, yeah, Josie was on. Yeah. It looked like really good toppings, but she had terrible problems with the bass. <laughs> He's very good at giving me full descriptions of what's been going on. It was. It was. It exactly was that. Um, so, uh, what should we do now? Um, I think we should speak to Grace Petrie. What do you think? Yeah. So, Grace Petrie. Hello. Um, what is... Right, because you had, at the beginning of lockdown, you, well, you've done two series of fantastic, uh, you know, just doing the, 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 the A to Z of, uh, of of cover versions and all of those grand things was I did, of- technically I you know, we, this is this is the, this is the one time I'm going to publicly address this so I hope that people are watching technically we've done one and a half sets of A to Z because we did the first one and then we did the second one and the first one um, you know people were so bored and so desperate for connection that you could put any old shit on the internet mm. and they'd wash it. And then we decided, and then we finished it. And a lot of people were like, that was really great. Please do another one. And we left it just too long that the weather got really nice <laughs> and it became legal to like hang out with your friends in parks. So people started doing that and absolutely understandably completely stopped watching our videos, which is totally fine. And, you know, like the reason we did them was to kind of give people a nice thing, a nice but then, thing. But then also it coincided with my dog having a terrible, um, he nearly died last summer. He nearly oh, died. no. Yeah, it was the day before my birthday. I thought he might die on my birthday, but he didn't. He lived to tell the tale. But anyway, it interrupted the second one about, Oh, I think. And then we kind of, you know, the day we had to rush the dog to the vet, we um, we didn't do one because I was really shaken up. And then the next couple of days we were waiting to hear if he was going to die and I was really shaken up. And then and then after that, we just sort of <laughs> the, found out the dog was going to be OK. And then every day that crept by, we kept sort of saying to each other. So we've really got to get on with that Q video, haven't we? But uh, but it's still not happened. So we do, we did one and a half A to Zs, but there will come a time, I'm sure. Perhaps if there is ever a third wave, maybe we will. Because by the by the time there was another lockdown, Ben had successfully escaped my um, custody and he'd leave oh. to his own place. So that's why, if, if anybody out there is watching, and you know, just to really reaffirm my reasons for uh, for not re restarting it uh we 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 didn't get a single question about are you going to finish that second exercise so i think it was the right decision demand wise um but uh, anyway sorry yes the, we did we did one and a half very nice little um co- different cover video a day and uh, and that was really good fun um and then since then yeah done a few live streams um, I'm sorry to hear Ben escaped because I could see it in his eyes. By yeah. about the first time you got to tea, I could see that he kept every time he was going, you know, that suddenly I could see him looking at the window. Yeah. And he had that kind of look, which was, she won't let me go. Yeah, and it added my, a really nice tint yeah. to it. This is it my was like sunny and share. <laughs> 
I, well, I've got him, babe. Uh, yeah, this is my fiddle player, Ben Moss, who was... Uh, had the misfortune to be on tour with me when coronavirus hit and had the even deeper misfortune to be between houses at the time. He'd been planning to get a house when he came back from the tour, uh, but it was not to be. It was not to be. <laughs> he, was, he was legally obliged to stay in my house for, he ended up being there for, uh, I think, nine months. So, yeah, I mean, let that be a parable to you if you come on <laughs> with me. I think this is really fun, though, and what a wonderful... I do think that... There have been these interventions in the past year in people's lives about which they've had no control. And some of them have led to interesting and unusual things. Like, this is not me sort of trying to be like, so don't worry. This is just me being like, so we can find some things that are positives that have happened despite this awful thing. And like, it is really cool that you guys got this nine month flatmate ship (laughs) from nowhere. And like, if, and also, if it had happened like a couple of months later, and he had his own place, I would have been alone. You know, I was living alone, and 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 I don't. I would have hated it. I really, I really feel for people who have been living alone for the past year. Um, I mean, some people are kind of wired that way, and that I'm sure you know would cope with it much better than I would. But I've really learned I'm definitely not wired that way. You know, I'm like a company guy. I think. <laughs> so. I yeah, love that thing too. you were saying about when, because it is true. I mean, that's why we stopped doing these after two months, because after two months, we thought, hang on a minute, everyone's kind of got used to it. So there's that bit that when you first do shows and it, hey, everyone, we're just here to help create a bit of connection. Everyone goes, oh, thanks so much. And then about two months later, you go, hey, everyone, we're, no, 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 we're, we're fine now. No, 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 we're, come, come on, we're here to help. No, 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 we're, we're, we're moving on. <laughs> I don't think you are. I think you still, still need the connection. We, we, hello, hello. <laughs> oh, oh, let's stop now. Yes. Um, but no, Ben's. I, I thought it was really lovely, and I, and uh, I, yeah, he seems like such a nice fella, Ben. And uh, yeah, he's a wonderful musician as well. That was one of the nicest things about doing these covers every day. Is like the amount of people who were saying, you know, uh, it, it, when he would kind of crack out the banjo, and people would be all the comments would be like, "How many instruments does this guy play?" <laughs> Because you know, it was so, he was like fiddle one day and a, and like melody in the next and banjo the next and mandolin the next and piano the next. He's like a, he's like Inspector Gadget for for musical instruments. But he's yeah, he's great. He's really great. And if and you sh- the folks at home should check out his solo stuff as well. He's on Spotify. His name's Ben Moss, and he's got a beautiful album called Lost Lands, which is just a gorgeous like contemporary folk album, which uh, you should all listen to and buy. That's nice. Mm. I, I suppose we nice. should probably go to you that. doing a song because <laughs> we're only doing a half hour show. Um, thanks very much, by the way, anyone who joined us. Uh, we've got loads of other things that we're we're doing. Um, this uh, oh, this week Carlo Ravelli. Uh, there's a, we're doing a new tips for existence, but that's also going to be on the Book Shambles channel as well, so everyone can hear that because most of the tips for existence. One of the reasons, if, if anyone ever wondered, because if you can support us via Patreon, that's amazing because this has really dragged on for quite a long time. <laughs> not being able to do um live gigs and we are making loads and loads of stuff and i think we're making to be honest stuff, good stuff as well and i'm really and so thank you very much everyone who can support us that's, that's absolutely great um because so, uh, i'm trying to think what else we've got oh, and as i mentioned the Derek jarman jubilee show with toy wilcox and richard o'brien and other people um and josie and me are going to make some documentaries soon aren't we on yes sp- we are we're going to get on with interesting things so thank you very much, everyone. And uh, Grace Petrie. Yes. Uh, play for us today. Oh, by the way, what was Q? What was the song that we, like the next song? What was it going to be? The one that you were cruelly denied. It well, was it, a Q anon song. Uh, She's, it, it was Patrick about. Street Boy's uh, magnum opus, Quit Playing Games With My Heart. Uh, so <laughs> oh, Josie, Josie's allergic to it. <laughs> Even just the very thought of it. I um, only like Backstreet's Back. All right. Well, we did that in the first one for E. Um, Any, which are the ones that you look back and you go, oh, now I've thought of what S could have been or whatever it might uh, be. There, um, there, was a, there was a few. There's quite a few that I really regretted not doing. But that's why I think when we all come out of this, um, I, we work because the first time we did the, the ACZ, and I'll play, I was going to play one of them now if that's okay. The, um, uh, we I did think it, a big issue. issue. Because um, people started saying, oh, uh, can we give you some money? 
and um you know i was luck i was one of the lucky people um who was actually included in the self employed self employed people um financial support so i was actually okay but and and so was ben but um so we just put up this just giving link for the big issue and by the time we'd finished the first thing we we it we raised um uh, it got to 11,000 pounds which is wow. absolutely amazing yeah just doing a load of daft songs you know what i mean just to stop us getting bored so it was really nice so and we, and cuz it raised so much money we were like well you know when this is when we thought there was no way this could possibly go on for a year. We were like, well, you know what, next spring, let's do a gig of this, because I think people would come to that, you know. So we were like, let's just do a night where we just play the whole A to Z. So I think we are going to probably do that as a live stream at some point in the next couple of weeks. I'm well, desperate- one night? That's going to be really big. That's amazing. It, well, we did it last year. We did them all in one night, and we and we started at 7, and I was like, this is going to go on till the early hours. But actually, we were done by midnight. Um, just to buy that. Think you were meant to be doing a gig with me the next day and you weren't well enough to do it and i remember <laughs> watching that stream the night before and going do you know what trent i don't think she'll be well enough to join us tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> it was arguably too much tequila involved there was arguably <laughs> too much tequila yeah to get you through next. five hours of solid performance that's it <laughs> you gotta have something in this <laughs> life I, yeah that I just, funny what? thing sorry Robin, I would like to say I, I am really proud of the fact, and the same with you, Grace, that all of us did do so much performing over the past year and do so much that was just accessible for anyone who might have fancied a bit of company or a bit of entertainment because, like, yeah, it felt like the right thing to do and I think not only did it keep us sane, but I think it probably did, at the very least, give people something that they could be like, I hate this, I'll watch it again. <laughs> Yeah, we have that one person who always went on the moment any of the things we did went up on YouTube. There was someone who went straight on there and gave it a thumbs down. So all of the stuff, occasionally they missed it, but almost every single morning a stay-at-home festival went up after we'd done the live show. Uh, get all these lovely thumbs up from people, and then there's always thumbs one down. Thing. Eventually you go, this has to be the same person. It can't yep. be that we've managed to spread out it's rejection. day to apologise, OK? Yeah. <laughs> no hard feelings. Oh, that tequila, what have I done this time? Yeah, it's funny when you talk about that money thing, because I remember with Trent, when we went, right, well, we'll all the money we make for Set Home Festival, we'll just give it away to like art centres and stuff like that, and, and any performers. And, and then at the end of the two months, I said to Trent, I think this might go on for a while. I'm not sure if we made the right decision giving it all away. <laughs> I, think, well, I think we should have had a little piggy bank at the side of it, but no, that I, I mean, so. it's one of those places. It's one of those things where, like, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, we'll definitely we'll give we'll give the money to charity. That's really eleven grand. <laughs> <laughs> how much? <laughs> That's how I felt on the chase. I did the chase for charity. We made and um, we made one hundred and forty grand, and so I got to give thirty five grand to Arts Emergency, which was one of the most wonderful feelings I've ever had in my life. But at the same time, it's really hard not to be like, but I, I did win the money. I won the money though, didn't I? Didn't, didn't I? You, should, you should ask if you can just go on like the non-celebrity version <laughs> be like guys i found out i'm really good at this uh, <laughs> i need to rinse it <laughs> sorry about that grace i'm very very excited to hear you play what are you going to play for us well i thought i'd do because we're given that we're talking about the age dead i thought i'd do one of my favorite uh, covers that we did and uh, vaguely uh, vaguely on point uh, to celebrate the um, vaccinations that people are getting or hopefully um, getting in, in not too much time. So I was going to go with uh, Pat Benatar's Hit Me With Your Best Shot, uh, which goes like this. Tough cookie with a long history of breaking little hearts like the one in me. But that's okay, let's see how we do it. Put up your cheeks and let's get down to it. Hit me with your best shot. Why don't you hit me with your best shot? Hit me with your best shot. Fire away. Come on, baby, come on, no, you don't fight fair. That's okay, baby, see if I care, yeah. Knock me down, it's all in vain. I get right back up on my feet again, yeah. And then there's a violin solo here by Ben. 
come back, Ben, all is forgiven. <laughs> Before I get another notch in my lipstick case, you better make sure you put me in my place. Oh, hit me with your best shot. Why don't you hit me with your best shot? Hit me with your best shot. Fire away. Hit me with your best shot. Why don't you hit me with your best shot? Hit me with your best shot, fire away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the guitar would impress me. I could do the midway through that. That was great. Television, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. And your pillow lines popped out right at the end. Well, yeah. thank you very much. So that's great. Thanks very much, everyone, for watching. Um, as I said, we've got about three or four shows that still gone on. Do you know, Trent told us the other day that uh, I think we did about 215 hours of live shows last year and we did 400 hours of shows altogether. Wow. Um, we're actually getting people who are leaving Patreon now for the odd reason. They're saying, there's just too much and I can't keep up. <laughs> so I don't quite know what, what? – I'm not sure what the balance is. But we've, <laughs> we've made an error by trying to make it value for money. I'm not, I don't know what the balance is going to be anyway. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to work that out. <laughs> Um, I listen, I want to say thank you to 2020 for being able to show me the answer to the question, what will I look like in, like 10, in years. 10 years' time? <laughs> it's, it's answered that question for me uh, within one year, and I'm really proud of it. It's, it's lovely to see what this face would look, would have looked like at 50 had things been normal. <laughs> I do that on a daily basis. Every every night I go to sleep and think, what would I look like at 10 years' time? Every morning I wake up and already I've moved forward. I'm like she, bathing in the flame <laughs> for a second time. It's because you're doing too much thinking. Your brain thinks, well, he's thought all those thoughts. It must be a year. Uh, well, that's my, yeah, that's the next book I'm working well, as you know. The next one is all about anxiety. It's been a good year to work on that. A constant um, companion. All right, guys. Um, I've really Great. Go and find her work. If you, I'm sure all of you have. By the way, there was a lovely thing, Johnny. Uh, Hello. Who, uh, there we are, Johnny. Johnny and the Baptists. Uh, and Johnny walked into shop when Grace started behind, right, just to bring a nice little cup of coffee, I think, for for Josie. And then took his jumper off, and I thought, hang on a minute, how far is this going to go? Is this returning <laughs> to those the, the first days of the internet when people used to have a cam, and then someone would go, oh, did someone just walk behind and took off their jumper, and suddenly, and we'll look, Trent will give us a go. There's a real spike in viewers uh at about 10 31 and it does seem to directly relate to johnny taking his jumper, jumper. <laughs> listen that's a very very oversubscribed market yeah. people love that it's, a, that's it's what you put your patreon <laughs> I've different websites for that actually i yeah, think i'm talking yeah. about chat roulette aren't i yeah if this goes on for too much longer you will be able to see johnny anytime you want <laughs> come and see him take off a jumper oh he's wearing thick socks today is he he bloody did he was <laughs> all right listen we we love you all very much we'll see you all later uh, later yeah cheers grace thanks trent thank you guys johnny thanks Bye. Bye guys lots of love